Flatulence, Wikipedia Audio Flatulence is defined in the medical literature as flatus expelled through the anus or the quality or state of being flatulent, which is defined in turn as marked by or affected with gases generated in the intestine or stomach, likely to cause digestive flatulence. The root of these words is from the Latin flatus a blowing, a breaking wind. Flatus is also the medical word for gas generated in the stomach or bowels. Despite these standard definitions, a proportion of intestinal gas may be swallowed environmental air, and hence flatus is not totally generated in the stomach or bowels. The scientific study of this area of medicine is termed flatology. It is normal for humans to pass flatus through the rectum although the volume and frequency may vary greatly between individuals. It is also normal for intestinal gas passed through the rectum to have a characteristic feculent smell, although this too may vary in concentration. Flatus is brought to the rectum by specialized contractions of the muscles in the intestines and colon. The noises commonly associated with flatulence are caused by the vibration of anal sphincters, and occasionally by the closed buttocks. Both the noise and smell associated with flatus leaving the anus can be sources of embarrassment or comedy in many cultures. There are five general symptoms related to intestinal gas, pain, bloating and abdominal distension, excessive flatus volume, excessive flatus smell and gas incontinence. Furthermore, Eructation is sometimes included under the topic of flatulence. Terminology Non-medical definitions of the term include the uncomfortable condition of having gas in the stomach and bowels, or a state of excessive gas in the alimentary canal. These definitions highlight that many people consider bloating abdominal distension or increased volume of intestinal gas to be synonymous with the term flatulence. Colloquially, flatulence may be referred to as farting, trumping, tooting, passing gas, breaking wind or simply gas or wind. Derived terms include vaginal flatulence, otherwise known as a queef. Generally speaking, there are four different types of complaints that relate to intestinal gas, which may present individually or in combination. Allen, V. On farting, language and laughter in the Middle Ages. Palgrave Macmillan. ISBN 978-0-312-234938. N. Stanton, R. Wind Breaks. Allen and Onwin. ISBN 978-1-86448-321-5, Dawson, Jim. Who Cut the Cheese? A Cultural History of the Fart. 10 Speed Press. ISBN 1-58008-011-1. Dawson, Jim. Blame It on the Dog, A Modern History of the Fart. 10 Speed Press. ISBN 1-58008-751-5, Franklin, Benjamin. JPEX, Carl, ed. Fart Proudly ed. Frog Ltd. Slash Blue Snake. ISBN 1-58394-079-0, Purcells, J., and Ganim, are fecal matters in early modern literature and art, studies and scatology. ISBN 0-7546-4116-3, Von Schmazen, D. Official Rules New World Odor International Freestyle Farting Championship Lulu ISBN 143-570-9195
Patients may complain of bloating as abdominal distension, discomfort, and pain from trapped wind. In the past, functional bowel disorders such as irritable bowel syndrome that produced symptoms of bloating were attributed to increased production of intestinal gas. However, three significant pieces of evidence refute this theory. First, in normal subjects, even very high rates of gas infusion into the small intestine are tolerated without complaints of pain or bloating and harmlessly passed as flatus per rectum. Secondly, studies aiming to quantify the total volume of gas produced by IBS patients have consistently failed to demonstrate increased volumes compared to healthy subjects. The proportion of hydrogen produced may be increased in a subset of IBS patients but this does not affect the total volume. Thirdly, it is known that the total volume of flatus produced by IBS patients who complain of pain and abdominal distension would be tolerated in normal subjects without any complaints of pain. Patients who complain of bloating frequently can be shown to have objective increases in abdominal girth, often increased throughout the day and then resolving during sleep. The increase in girth combined with the fact that the total volume of flatus is not increased led to studies aiming to image the distribution of intestinal gas in patients with bloating. They found that gas was not distributed normally in these patients, there was segmental gas pooling and focal distension. In conclusion, abdominal distension, pain, and bloating symptoms are the result of abnormal intestinal gas dynamics rather than increased flatus production. As mentioned above, the normal range of volumes of flatus in normal individuals varies hugely. All intestinal gas is either swallowed environmental air, present intrinsically in foods and beverages or the result of gut fermentation. Swallowing small amounts of air occurs while eating and drinking. This is emitted from the mouth by eructation and is normal. Excessive swallowing of environmental air is called aerophagia, and has been shown in a few case reports to be responsible for increased flatus volume. This is however considered a rare cause of increased flatus volume. Gases contained in food and beverages is likewise emitted largely through eructation, e.g., carbonated beverages. Endogenously produced intestinal gases make up 74% of flatus in normal subjects. The volume of gas produced is partially dependent upon the composition of the intestinal microbiota, which is normally very resistant to change but is also very different in different individuals. Some patients are predisposed to increased endogenous gas production by virtue of their gut microbiota composition. The greatest concentration of gut bacteria is in the colon, while the small intestine is normally near sterile. Fermentation occurs when unabsorbed food residues may arrive in the colon. Therefore, even more than the composition of the microbiota, diet is the primary factor that dictates the volume of flatus produced. Diets that aim to reduce the amount of undigested fermentable food residues arriving in the colon have been shown to significantly reduce the volume of flatus produced. Again, it is emphasized that increased volume of intestinal gas will not cause bloating and pain in normal subjects. Abnormal intestinal gas dynamics will create pain, distension, and bloating, regardless of whether there is high or low total flatus volume. Although flatus possesses physiological smell, this may be abnormally increased in some patients and cause social distress to the patient. Increased smell of flatus presents a distinct clinical issue from other complaints related to intestinal gas. Some patients may exhibit oversensitivity to bad flatus smell, and in extreme forms, olfactory reference syndrome may be diagnosed. Gas incontinence could be defined as loss of voluntary control over the passage of flatus. 
It is a recognized subtype of fecal incontinence, and is usually related to minor disruptions of the continence mechanisms. Some consider gas incontinence to be the first, sometimes only, symptom of fecal incontinence. Intestinal gas is composed of varying quantities of exogenous sources and endogenous sources. The exogenous gases are swallowed when eating or drinking or increased swallowing during times of excessive salivation. The endogenous gases are produced either as a byproduct of digesting certain types of food, or of incomplete digestion, as is the case during steatorrhea. Anything that causes food to be incompletely digested by the stomach or small intestine may cause flatulence when the material arrives in the large intestine, due to fermentation by yeast or prokaryotes normally or abnormally present in the gastrointestinal tract. Flatulence-producing foods are typically high in certain polysaccharides, especially oligosaccharides such as inulin. Those foods include beans, lentils, dairy products, onions, garlic, spring onions, leeks, turnips, swedes, radishes, sweet potatoes, potatoes, cashews, Jerusalem artichokes, oats, wheat, and yeast in breads. Cauliflower, broccoli, cabbage, Brussels sprouts and other cruciferous vegetables that belong to the genus Brassica are commonly reputed to not only increase flatulence, but to increase the pungency of the flatus. Signs and Symptoms In beans, endogenous gases seem to arise from complex oligosaccharides that are particularly resistant to digestion by mammals but are readily digestible by gut flora microorganisms that inhabit the digestive tract. These oligosaccharides pass through the upper intestine largely unchanged, and when they reach the lower intestine, bacteria feed on them, producing copious amounts of flatus. In the case of people who have lactose intolerance, Intestinal bacteria feeding on lactose can give rise to excessive gas production when milk or lactose-containing substances have been consumed. Interest in the causes of flatulence was spurred by high-altitude flight and manned spaceflight, the low atmospheric pressure, confined conditions, and stresses peculiar to those endeavors were cause for concern. In the field of mountaineering, the phenomenon of high-altitude flatus expulsion was first recorded over 200 years ago. Some infections, such as giardiasis, are also associated with flatulence. Flatus is mostly produced as a byproduct of bacterial fermentation in the gastrointestinal tract, especially the colon. There are reports of aerophagia causing excessive intestinal gas but this is considered rare. Over 99% of the volume of flatus is composed of non-smelly gases. These include oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, hydrogen, and methane. Nitrogen is not produced in the gut, but a component of environmental air. Patients who have excessive intestinal gas that is mostly composed of nitrogen have aerophagia. Hydrogen, carbon dioxide, and methane are all produced in the gut and contribute 74% of the volume of flatus in normal subjects. Methane and hydrogen are flammable, and so flatus containing adequate amounts of these can be ignited. Not all humans produce flatus that contains methane. For example, in one study of the feces of nine adults, only five of the samples contained archaea capable of producing methane. The prevalence of methane over hydrogen in human farts may correlate with obesity, constipation, and irritable bowel syndrome, as archaea that oxidize hydrogen into methane promote the metabolism's ability to absorb fatty acids from food. The remaining trace compounds give flatus its smell. Historically, 
Compounds such as indole, scatole, ammonia, and short-chain fatty acids were thought to cause the smell of flatus. More recent evidence proves that the major contribution to the smell of flatus comes from a combination of volatile sulfur compounds. It is known that hydrogen sulfide, methylmercaptan, dimethyl sulfide, dimethyl disulfide, and dimethyl trisulfide are present in flatus. The benzopyrrole volatiles indole and scatol have a mothball smell and therefore probably do not contribute greatly to the characteristic smell of flatus. In one study, H2S concentration was shown to correlate convincingly with perceived bad smell of flatus, followed by MM and DMS. This is supported by the fact that H2S may be the most abundant VSC present. These results were generated from subjects who were eating a diet high in pinto beans to stimulate flatus production. Others report that MM was the greatest contributor to the smell of flatus in patients not under any specific dietary alterations. It has now been demonstrated that MM, DMS, and H2S are all present in human flatus in concentrations above their smell perception thresholds. It is known that increased dietary sulfur-containing amino acids significantly increases the smell of flatus. It is therefore likely that the smell of flatus is created by a combination of VSC, with minimal contribution from non-sulfur volatiles. Such smell can also be caused by the presence of large numbers of microflora bacteria or the presence of feces in the rectum. Diets high in protein, especially sulfur-containing amino acids, have been demonstrated to significantly increase the smell of flatus. Bloating and pain Excessive volume Normal flatus volume range is around 476 to 1491 ml per 24 hours. This variability between individuals is greatly dependent upon diet. Similarly the number of flatus episodes per day is variable, the normal range is given as 820 per day. The volume of flatus associated with each flatulence event again varies. The volume of the first flatulence upon waking in the morning is significantly larger than those during the day. This may be due to buildup of intestinal gas in the colon during sleep, the peak in peristaltic activity in the first few hours after waking or the strong prokinetic effect of rectal distension on the rate of transit of intestinal gas. It is now known that gas is moved along the gut independently of solids and liquids, and this transit is more efficient in the erect position compared to when supine. It is thought that large volumes of intestinal gas present low resistance, and can be propelled by subtle changes in gut tone, capacitance, and proximal contraction and distal relaxation. This process is thought not to affect solid and liquid intraluminal contents. Smell Incontinence of flatus Cause Mechanism Production, composition, and smell. Researchers investigating the role of sensory nerve endings in the anal canal did not find them to be essential for retaining fluids in the anus, and instead speculate that their role may be to distinguish between flatus and feces, thereby helping detect a need to defecate or to signal the end of defecation. The sound varies depending on the tightness of the sphincter muscle and velocity of the gas being propelled, as well as other factors, such as water and body fat. The auditory pitch of the flatulence outburst can also be affected by the anal embouchure. Among humans, flatulence occasionally happens accidentally, such as incidentally to coughing or sneezing or during orgasm, on other occasions, Flatulence can be voluntarily elicited by tensing the rectum or bearing down on stomach or bowel muscles and subsequently relaxing the anal sphincter, resulting in the expulsion of flatus. 
Since problems involving intestinal gas present as different complaints, the management is cause-related. Volume and Intestinal Gas Dynamics While not affecting the production of the gases themselves, surfactants can reduce the disagreeable sensations associated with flatulence, by aiding the dissolution of the gases into liquid and solid fecal matter. Preparations containing cymethicon reportedly operate by promoting the coalescence of smaller bubbles into larger ones more easily passed from the body, either by burping or flatulence. Such preparations do not decrease the total amount of gas generated in or passed from the colon, but make the bubbles larger and thereby allowing them to be passed more easily. Other drugs including prokinetics, lobiprostone, antibiotics, and probiotics are also used to treat bloating in patients with functional bowel disorders such as IBS, and there is some evidence that these measures may reduce symptoms. A flexible tube, inserted into the rectum, can be used to collect intestinal gas in a flatus bag. This method is occasionally needed in a hospital setting when the patient is unable to pass gas normally. One method of reducing the volume of flatus produced is dietary modification, reducing the amount of fermentable carbohydrates. This is the theory behind diets such as the low FODMAP diet. Certain spices have been reported to counteract the production of intestinal gas most notably the closely related cumin, coriander, caraway, fennel, and others such as achwane, turmeric, asafoetida, epizote, and cambio kelp. Most starches, including potatoes, corn, noodles, and wheat, produce gas as they are broken down in the large intestine. Intestinal gas can be reduced by fermenting the beans and making them less gas-inducing, or by cooking them in the liquor from a previous batch. Some legumes also stand up to prolonged cooking, which can help break down the oligosaccharides into simple sugars. On the other hand, fermented bean products such as miso are less likely to produce as much intestinal gas. Fermentative lactic acid bacteria such as Lactobacillus casei and Lactobacillus plantarum reduce flatulence in human intestinal tract. Probiotics are reputed to reduce flatulence when used to restore balance to the normal intestinal flora. Live yogurt contains, among other lactic bacteria, Lactobacillus acidophilus, which may be useful in reducing flatulence. L. acidophilus may make the intestinal environment more acidic, supporting a natural balance of the fermentative processes. L. acidophilus is available in supplements. Prebiotics, which generally are non-digestible oligosaccharides, such as fructulogosaccharide, generally increase flatulence in a similar way as described for lactose intolerance. Digestive enzyme supplements may significantly reduce the amount of flatulence caused by some components of foods not being digested by the body and thereby promoting the action of microbes in the small and large intestines. It has been suggested that alpha-galactosidase enzymes, which can digest certain complex sugars, are effective in reducing the volume and frequency of flatus. The enzymes alpha-galactosidase, lactase, amylase, lipase, protease, cellulase, glucoamylase, invertase, malt diastase, pectinase, and bromelin are available, either individually or in combination blends, in commercial products. Management The antibiotic rifaximin often used to treat diarrhea caused by the microorganism E. coli, may reduce both the production of intestinal gas and the frequency of flatus events. Bismuth Pain and bloating 
smell from flatulence is commonly treated with bismuth subgalate, available over the counter in the US as Devrom. Bismuth subgalate is commonly used by individuals who have had ostomy surgery, bariatric surgery, fecal incontinence, and irritable bowel syndrome. Bismuth subsalicylate is a compound that binds H2S, and one study reported a dose of 524 mg four times a day for three seven days bismuth subsalicylate yielded a 95% reduction in fecal H2S release in both humans and rats. Another bismuth compound, bismuth subnitrate was also shown to bind with H2S. Another study showed that bismuth acted synergistically with various antibiotics to inhibit sulfate-reducing gut bacteria and sulfide production. Some authors proposed a theory that H2S was involved in the development of ulcerative colitis and that bismuth might be helpful in the management of this condition. However, Bismuth administration in rats did not prevent them from developing ulcerative colitis despite reduced H2S production. Also, new evidence suggests that colonic H2S is largely present in bound forms, probably sulfides of iron and other metals. Rarely, serious bismuth toxicity may occur with higher doses. Activated Charcoal Volume Smell too Incontinence Despite being an ancient treatment for various digestive complaints, activated charcoal did not produce reduction in both the total flatus volume nor the release of sulfur-containing gases, and there was no reduction in abdominal symptoms. The authors suggested that saturation of charcoal binding sites during its passage through the gut was the reason for this. A further study concluded that activated charcoal does not influence gas formation in vitro or in vivo. Other authors reported that activated charcoal was effective. A study in eight dogs concluded activated charcoal reduced H2S by 71%. In combination with yucca skidadra, and zinc acetate, this was increased to an 86% H2S reduction, although total flatus volume and number of flatus events was unchanged. An early study reported activated charcoal prevented a large increase in the number of flatus events and increased breath hydrogen concentrations that normally occur following a gas-producing meal. Garments and External Devices In 1998, Chester Buckweimer of Pueblo, Colorado, received a patent for the first undergarment that contained a replaceable charcoal filter. The undergarments are airtight and provide a pocketed escape hole in which a charcoal filter can be inserted. In 2001 Mr. Weimer received the IG Nobel Prize for Biology for his invention. A similar product was released in 2002, but rather than an entire undergarment, consumers are able to purchase an insert similar to a pantyliner that contains activated charcoal. The inventors, Myra and Brian Conant of Mililani, Hawaii, still claim on their website to have discovered the undergarment product in 2002, but state that their tests concluded that they should release an insert instead. Flatus incontinence where there is involuntary passage of gas, is a type of fecal incontinence, and is managed similarly. In many cultures, flatulence in public is regarded as embarrassing, but, depending on context, can also be considered humorous. People will often strain to hold in the passing of gas when in polite company, or position themselves to conceal the noise and scent. In other cultures, it may be no more embarrassing than coughing. While the act of passing flatus in said cultures is generally considered to be an unfortunate occurrence in public settings, Flatulence may, in casual circumstances and especially among children, be.
be used as either a humorous supplement to a joke, or as a comic activity in and of itself. The social acceptability of flatulence-based humor in entertainment and the mass media varies over the course of time and between cultures. Enough entertainers performed with their flatus that the term flatulist was coined. The whoopee cushion is a joking device invented in the early 20th century for simulating a fart. In 2008, a farting application for the iPhone earned nearly $10,000 in one day. A farting game named Touchwood was documented by John Gregory Bork in the 1890s. It existed under the name of safety in the 20th century in the U.S., and has been found being played in 2011. In January 2011, the Malawi Minister of Justice, George Chapanda, said that air fouling legislation would make public farting illegal in his country. When reporting the story, the media satirist Chapanda's statement with punning headlines. Later, the minister withdrew his statement. Flatulence is often blamed as a significant source of greenhouse gases, owing to the erroneous belief that the methane released by livestock is in the flatus. While livestock account for around 20% of global methane emissions, 90-95% of that is released by exhaling or burping. Since New Zealand produces large amounts of agricultural products, it is in the unique position of having high methane emissions from livestock compared to other greenhouse gas sources. The New Zealand government is a signatory to the Kyoto Protocol and therefore attempts are being made to reduce greenhouse emissions. To achieve this, an agricultural emissions research levy was proposed which promptly became known as a fart tax or flatulence tax. It encountered opposition from farmers, farming lobby groups and opposition politicians. Historical comment on the ability to fart at will is observed as early as St. Augustine's The City of God. Augustine mentions men who have such command of their bowels, that they can break wind continuously at will so as to produce the effect of singing. Intentional passing of gas and its use as entertainment for others appear to have been somewhat well known in pre-modern Europe, according to mentions of it in medieval and later literature, including Rabelais. L. E. Patomini was a famous French performer in the 19th century who, as well as many professional farters before him, did flatulence impressions and held shows. The performer Mr. Methane carries on L.E. Potomina's tradition today. Also, a 2002 film Thunderpants revolves around a boy named Patrick Smash who has an ongoing flatulence problem from the time of his birth. He eventually overcomes his problems and fulfills his dreams, including one of becoming an astronaut. In literature, farting features prominently in the novel The Catcher in the Rye. Since the 1970s, farting has increasingly been featured in film, especially lowbrow comedies such as Blazing Saddles. In Islam, flatulence invalidates wudu. Notes Bibliography Society and Culture Environmental Impact Entertainment Religion